Um, and now it's going to be, the title is uh, Blip 10,000, a social video data set containing SPUG. Semi-professional user, user generated, we, we invent <laughs> acronyms for anything basically, uh, content for tagging and retrieval. And the presenter, Christoph Kofler. Yeah. Great. Ah, shit. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Christoph Kofler from uh, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands and uh, I'm going to present a, a social video data set containing uh, semi-professional user-generated content for tagging and retrieval, so more for the indexing and retrieval side uh, of uh, uh, multimedia uh, retrieval. So, uh, yeah, as we already heard actually from one motivational slide uh, of the third presenter today, the, the amounts of uh, internet videos uh, is, is really growing and uh, the, the internet videos are uh, in the majority of the cases not properly tagged or not perfectly tagged and this obviously makes it super hard for, for users to find content they're actually looking for, to browse for content and obviously uh, technologies, algorithms are required uh, which uh, would annotate uh, those videos in a, in a better way and in a more informed fashion basically. Um, so it would be good to, to, to provide a data set which is used to, to enforce uh, uh, these these uh, developments basically and also to uh, 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 compare uh, the developments uh, of different researchers so um, as actually every data set out there there are some 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 general requirements it would be good that uh, the, the data set is is pretty diverse and is covering uh, a lot of uh, diversity which which are out there in in, in the domain of internet video uh, so the, dat the data collection strategy should kind of go into that direction. Um, and also uh, there should be multiple modalities uh, yeah, in the data set, not only audiovisual information or some poor annotations from the text side, but also some rich information uh, which is out there uh, and it's uh, uh, basically coming from, from, from user-generated data. Um, and obviously the a very uh, important part as well is that the data set should be open, so it should be it should have a license which is basically allowing us to you know publish to 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 compare uh, algorithms to compare uh, evaluation uh, results and so on and uh, in my opinion most importantly it should be uh, designed in such a way that uh, you know user uh, centric tasks uh, are are motivated to 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 be defined based on that data set and not that you know that we have to that we have a data set and then we have to try to to, to come up with a task which we actually can realize on, on that data set. Um, so what we did is we focused on uh, the, the Plip TV uh, um, platform, which is, as we already said, a platform for uh, semi-professional user-generated content. And the, the users or who upload their videos there show some basic proficiency in filmmaking. And uh, you know the, the videos up, uh, on, that on that platform have some kind of script, are a bit thought through, not compared to, uh, compared to m more compared to videos on, on YouTube, for example, which is more going in direction of point and shoot. And the main uh, reason why we actually chose Blip TV over uh, YouTube is uh, that uh, the Blip TV uh, videos have a Creative Commons license, which is uh, not available for the YouTube videos. So actually that we can uh, provide a, a more uh, open data set. Um, the data set contains around 14,800 videos, which is about like 3,300 uh, hours uh, in, in duration. And uh, usually on Plip TV, the, the, the videos are published in the form of series uh, for a particular topic. And these series are then uh, yeah, separated in, in episodes, so to say. And uh, the content of the data set is, uh, first of all, uh, audiovisual content. Uh, then speech recognition transcripts, user-contributed metadata, and also annotations uh, from the social network. Before I talk a bit uh, more about these, uh, these individual points, I would like to uh, focus on the, on the collection process, so how did we actually create the data set? So there are many ways out there how we could actually come up with uh, videos uh, for the data set, for example, to use some 
seed queries and then collect data sets, uh, collect videos from, from Clip TV using those seed queries, but then we would also kind of bias the data set in a particular direction. So what we thought is to use Topsy, which is a, a social, yeah, social search engine, and uh, we, we used Topsy to basically crawl uh, a Twitter that was back in 2009. So yeah, I'm not sure if these interfaces still exist like we used them back then, but uh, back then, we, we basically crawled videos uh, which from Blip TV which occur uh, in, 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 in tweets on Twitter. So where there is a, a tweet uh, on Twitter and a, a Blip TV video is basically linked uh, uh, in, in those tweets. So what we did then is to, to see in those tweets where is, there, uh, is where is the link from tweets to the Blip TV videos and then use basically these URLs to collect uh, uh the, the videos from, from Blip TV, and this is making it really diverse, or as diverse as possible, and, and a bit wider in scope, basically. And then we also checked uh, w whether these videos have a Creative Commons license, and whether you know, the annotations are good, and so on. And then we uh, came up a eventually with the data set of the 14,800 videos. Okay, for the audiovisual content, in general, we try to keep the data set as uh, natural as possible, so to say. So we, we wanted to keep it really to preserve this wild character, uh, to keep it like as, na yeah, as natural as possible out on the internet. And so we also didn't really change anything on the, on the sample rates or the frame rates or so on of the audiovisual content. So we really kept, kept the videos like they are. And uh, additionally to the, to the actual videos what we downloaded, um, we also performed shot segmentation that was done at the TU Berlin. So uh, each episode basically is segmented in shots, which have usually on average a duration of 30 seconds. Um, and uh, we get 420,000 shots over the whole data set. And for each shot, uh, from the middle of each shot, we basically uh, extracted also a keyframe to do some more analysis on, on the visual data, uh, on the visual uh, model modality in that case. Um, additionally, from from the video, we uh, got uh, from, from, from partners Limsi and Lium in, in France, we got the speech recognition transcripts. So basically, the audio channel was used to, to extract uh, the speech which is going on in the video. Uh, predominantly, that was, uh, the, 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 the audio track was in English, spo in, in the spoken content, but there are also some other languages like German, Dutch, Spanish, Italian, and so on. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard for, for these uh, for these algorithms, for these technologies to, to extract uh, uh, the, the speech recognition transcripts. So for around 12,500 videos, we got the, the, an the, the annotations of, uh, uh, for speech recognition. And yeah, we get that together with, as you can see here, with some additional data, like when does a word start, how long does it go in the video, basically, with what, what confidence did the classifier say that this is a word like imagine or being or trapped or something like that. Um, for the user uh, contributed metadata, we collected the title of uh, the, the series, the episode, the duration, the license, the, the, the yeah, this, this kind of data, and obviously also the tags. The tags we normalized uh, that uh, for, for, and we only kept tags which occur at least 10 times in the data set, making it uh, like 2,000 uh, unique tags in the, in the overall data set. And the majority of the videos, as you can see, is tagged with less than four tags. 23% of the videos contain no tags, 21% um, two to three tags, and so on. Um, very important, and that's also what's, what, uh, what makes the data set uh, pretty unique, in my opinion, uh, are the annotations what we uh, obtained from Twitter. Um, so as we, as I already explained, we used this Topsy search engine to, to get uh, actually the videos, and then we thought we could do some more with the actual tweets. So these tweets are basically rich in information, are sometimes describing the, the content of, uh, of the videos. You can also think about that they are like some kind of comments on YouTube videos, they, they, they could also be used. So in this case, it's actually the, the, the tweet text which is describing uh, the video in, in, in more detail. And uh, what we did is we, um, for an initial process, we um, collected the user uh, IDs 
uh, or the users who were talking about the videos in our data set. And these are basically the seed users. And that's like around 9,000 uh, unique users. And from these users, uh, we collected a maximum of 3,200 tweets per user. That's basically the limitation of the Twitter API. And uh, in these 3,200 um, tweets per users, 25,000 uh, reference basically to videos in our data set. But I mean, not only the, the tweets which are only uh, referencing to the videos, but also other uh, tweets of a user who is talking about videos could be you know, good contextual information uh, which could further be exploited in, in uh, some applications and some, some algorithms. And additionally to the actual tweets, to the, to the, to the textual annotation, we also collected the, the social network basically, where we also used uh, the 9,000 unique users as seed users and then collected their followers, friends, and people who are referenced in their tweets basically. And we did that on two social levels and get them basically uh, yeah, the, the, the relationship between uploaders and viewers. And uh, that could certainly also be exploited. Um, yeah, so the data set was used in, in a couple of benchmark initiatives already. I'm going to talk very briefly about two of them here. The first one is uh, the genre tagging task of uh, Medieval that was uh, uh, proposed uh, in 2011 and 2012, where the task is basically uh, to automatically assign genre labels to videos as users would do that uh, uh, on on their videos using a diverse set of features, using a diverse set of, of methods, basically. The ground truth for, uh, for these videos, uh, for the genres, was actually pretty easy to collect. We just used the, the, the genre annotation, basically, what users uh, gave, on, gave to their videos on Blip TV, which are uh, genre labels like uh, autos and vehicles, comedy, sports, game, religion, uh, food and whatsoever and there are like in total 25 uh, categories out there plus one default category where the user was not really sure what to assign so then the blip tv also offers uh, a default category basically and for the for the actual task we split the whole data set in uh, one third of development set two thirds of a test set which should uh, enable both uh, machine learning approaches so which was already kind of explained by marcus where the a model is trained uh, and also uh, 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 information retrieval approaches where, where the genre tags are basically used as queries and some, some more sophisticated uh, uh, things can be done uh, to, to uh, assign a label to, to a video. What is uh, interesting to be mentioned is that we provide the, the data set so to, to an MSYS and which is hosted. Um, we, we give the, the, the genre annotations basically um, so that's actually the data set what we, what we submitted here. Um, another task where the data set or yeah, a subset of this data set was used was also in the medieval benchmark initiative, but in a different task, in the search and hyperlinking task, which has basically uh, two, or which is separated in two tasks. First of all, uh, the, the teams are asked to retrieve video segments, so jump in points into videos, uh, which correspond to particular spoken content queries. So where the, the query is actually pretty long uh, and the user wants to find this particular sentence or uh, mm, yeah, where people talk about a particular thing in a video and we, the, 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 the teams are basically required to, to find the jump in point to those videos. And the second task is then to, once we have these segments, these video segments, to find similar segments in other videos which talk about the same thing or similar things to basically enrich the first segment uh, yeah, in a very informed fashion. Also different metho uh, methods, different features. And uh, yeah, the queries and the ground truth for that data set uh, was generated using um, crowdsourcing, using the Amazon Mechanical Turk platform. Um, yeah, so where the where both the segments and the, the videos were basically annotated on, uh, on crowdsourcing and then evaluated. And the development and test set contain uh, 30 queries in each of obviously uh, distinct queries. And uh, so this is not what we provide here, but I just wanted to mention that, that uh, the data set was... So yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, but that, that the data set can also be used for some, some other things uh, next, to the, next to genre tagging, basically. 
So to summarize, um, we, we introduced a real-world uh, video data set which is built on multiple modalities and uh, which is, yeah, for which the, the, the wild character is actually preserved as much as possible and which is also yeah, as wide as possible. And as I said, particularly the social network information makes the, the data set unique, I would say, and uh, could s is certainly a source which is uh, further to be exploited in, uh, um, for, for video indexing and retrieval. And uh, the data set or subsets of the data set were already successfully applied in previous benchmark parks mark initiatives uh, with like uh, 40 plus participating teams over, over the last four years, I would say, um, or f three to four years. Yeah. Um, just in the for the end, actually, I don't even need to do that because we heard uh, Medieval already a couple of times today. But uh, if you are interested in, 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 in uh, yeah, going to Medieval or participating in the, in, in the tasks which are offered there, uh, please go to uh, multimediaevil.org and uh, the Medieval workshop will actually take place a couple of days before the ACM Multimedia 2013 in uh, Barcelona. Just that you know that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, do we have any questions or do we want to go <laughs> to the break? I, I understood that there is fruit and actually I've seen the sun. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, uh, my question is uh, whether uh, uh, you keep any kind of record of users' uh, viewing history. You mean like view count or something like that? Uh, not only view count. For example, uh, uh, a user watched uh, how much duration of a video particular. No, no, this is not recorded. This is we, what, we, what, we, what we collect here is the data from the, so the raw data basically, not the, not the the data, how users, uh, when they search for videos, behave, basically. So that is obviously not recorded. We don't have access to that kind of data, unfortunately, ah, in that okay. case. Yeah. So we don't have the logs. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. OK, so thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is just the last uh, uh, talk of this session.